All right, now, on this first episode, you guys already know this car because we already reviewed this in the previous video. We're going to actually rebuild this and take you guys along for a ride of how to create good power. And of course, your favorite, the compression test. But we'll do you one better. We actually base run this car before we start the rebuild. This way, you know the power. Yes. And then he can go along with us through the series and see where we start getting the power that we need. A lot of good tricks you're gonna pick up on the series, so hop along and enjoy the ride. Alright, now first and foremost, let me introduce the series to you guys. We're gonna do the initial base run to establish a baseline and then complete rebuild of the engine from the block even the head. Implement tricks and stuff that we do or learn from limited class racing and then pre-run and then prep ring for seating, which is like kind of like a break in and then finally base run to see the difference. We will maintain the stock airbox, stock header and muffler and stock ECU. Therefore, this is completely an improvement or improvement to be expected on the sole purpose of actually rebuilding the engine properly. And you know, you might enjoy this series because we're going to implement a lot of tricks in order for us to gain a vast and good improvement. And you know, all this wouldn't have been possible without Dino Pro Philippines. The Dino facility of our choice, or our choice that we always prefer to go to. And here's the rate. For a baseline, for a two-wheel drive, that's front wheel and rear wheel drive, is 3,000. And then for a four-wheel drive, like an Evo or a GTR, it's 3,000, or 3,500, sorry. And then for tuning, 1R for two-wheel drive is 6,000, and for a four-wheel drive is 7,000. And even for motorbikes, they have good stuff, so you gotta visit them. And of course, here are the places that you can contact. They have the Mindana Avenue branch that we like to go to, Sukhat, and of course their customer service number and the link on their Facebook page. And this link will be in the description below for you guys. So let's go. All right, on to the engine or the VTI. This is a 2000 model VTI. So it's actually 22 years old. Well, actually they acquired it, I think sometime in July 2000. So actually, yeah, it's now officially 22 years old. It's never been opened or rebuilt, not even the cylinder head. So this is bone stock, including the headers and the full exhaust. So this is going to be interesting because I'm pretty sure the wear is really extensive because all of this three brothers or the four or five siblings learned to drive on this car and you know when i learned how to drive on my dad's beetle oh yeah i was launching it sooner or later oh wait my dad might watch this sorry never mind that also about this engine it's actually kind of rare i think or odd for me because it has a pg 6 d something code instead of a ph 16 a for a vti i'm sure you guys know that so, so anyone that knows the reason for the difference on some vti's when they're either ph 16 a or pg 6 d something comment down below and let me know because i i don't know so Okay, now that we know the condition and the status of the engine is which is basically all stock, including the computer box. Now let's go head on to the compression test. And we will also do this after the rebuild. So they said before and after, including the base run. Let's go. Okay, so we start with cylinder one. Oh, 200. All right, so cylinder one is 200 psi so now let's go to cylinder two all right now here we go come on okay. 
Four, also 200. So cylinder two is also 200. That's pretty consistent, that's pretty good. Man, okay, now let's go to cylinder number three. Oh man, 200 yet again. So number three is also 200 PSI. That is pretty consistent. This is actually starting to look like a well-maintained motor. Good job, guys. All right, so now cylinder number four, the last one. Damn, 200, actually looks like 201. So cylinder number four is actually 200 PSI. So all across the board is 200 PSI. That's pretty darn good. So the reason why initially my reaction was like, damn, because now you know it's gonna be that hard or more challenging to exert more power or squeeze more power because it's actually a quite healthy engine for 22 years. Good job, Honda. That's crazy. And good job to the owners for actually taking care of the car for the whole span of 22 years. That's crazy good. And now actually this gets more fun because it's more challenging to squeeze more power if ever from this. So let's see the base run. Let's go. Yeah. Okay, now we're driving it into the slot of the, of the Dino Jet. And look how clean the facility of Dino Pro is. This is why it's our favorite to go to for any Dino needs. You know, they're actually quite reliable and they have good components and they maintain all their stuff really good. Look, pretty clean, right? All right, yeah. Now we're slotting it in. So, this now we're gonna strap the car in so let's go all the guys at dino bro really know their deal or know what they're doing yeah dino pro looks really clean just strapping it in all right now we're gonna be ready all right it's all snug and all ready yep ready to rumble oh yeah well, okay, a stock kind of rumble. That's a purely stock P816 VTI with stock airbox and stock headers. Look, want to know what it made? Okay, no need to wait. Here we go. And you know what's weird is it's, it's kind of weird that the engine or the car, you can barely hear it. We got used to hearing the engine loud on the dyno. Can't even tell if it's on full throttle or not. Oh, there, that's full throttle. Let's go. And one cool thing to note, did you notice the dyno run on third gear took a while or it's kind of taking long? That's because Horsepower or wheel horsepower is a product of torque over time. So when you hear the dyno, especially the dyno jet, if it it runs fast or a quick run, you'd know that a, that's a strong engine, like 250 or 240 wheel horsepower. Okay, now let's look at the results. Let's go. Here's the dyno sheet. Look. Just kidding, guys. Of course, I'm going to show you a better picture here. It's actually, it made 101 first. On the second run, it made this. Look, 102 wheel horsepower. That's bone stock. This is actually pretty good and pretty strong, right? This is impressive. And what's even more impressive is on the stock box. Look at the air fuel ratio. That's pretty good. Good job, Honda. And we all know for pump gas, the most power you can find at full throttle is between 12.7 and 13.2 is to one air fuel ratio. 
And look at that, that graph. Honda surely knew what he was, they were doing with Airbox and the stock muffler. But of course, as you know us, we don't really stop there for you guys. We did this. We actually did one final run with the Ram Air system with the velocity stack. And you can click here about the video on velocity stacks. But unfortunately, this one, I'm not selling this. But there are other things there that I'm looking to market out. So you can check it out. Unfortunately, we didn't get to try this because it's, it was actually hitting the fuel line or the fuel hose. So I got to make some small adjustments this way. The other or the next base run in the end will get to try it or test it for you guys. So you know it's going to be good. Shall we? You guys want to see the results? All right, let's go. Oh, you can hear the growls different. And you can actually notice the dyno pull is significantly faster than the previous one, right? So we know it made more. So let's see. All right, wait, let me just show you the actual photo first so that you can see it better. And then let's compare it to the earlier run. Now, would you look at that? 106.35 wheel horsepower. And look at the torque. It's 104.78. Whoa. So on a stock engine doing nothing, we just changed the intake pipe and we gained four wheel horsepower. And we compared to the previous graph, look, it's 102. But look at the torque, it's 95.18 feet pounds. And then it jumped up to 104.78. That's crazy good, right? I mean, we just did nothing. We just installed the Ram Air, but Take a look at the air fuel ratio of the stock box on the stock air box. It's pretty good and near perfect, right? But look, with the Ram air system, it actually got leaner a little bit, you know. So imagine if you can tune this with the ECU, it'll probably be 107 or 108. Unfortunately, we forgot to overlay both graphs, but we can do this for now until next time. As you can see, the difference of the air fuel, right? With the Ram Air, it goes leaner, even up top. And But the power is actually improving. Look at the significance improvement on even on torque. Look at the torque on the top end. It's less, it's dropping less, right? That's pretty cool. So when you think about it, all we did was install a ram air so now let's go compute the volumetric efficiency of this car okay so the vdi has 97 cubic inches of displacement and 6800 rpm and 9.6 is to one compression so in theory that's 114 wheel horsepower if it's 100 percent volumetric efficiency but because it's 102 that's actually 90% volumetric efficiency. That's pretty impressive. When you think about it, Honda knows their stuff. And on this with the Ram Air, because it's 106, that's 93.5% volumetric efficiency. That's crazy. I mean, you know, we just added the velocity stack and this intake. But when you think about it, imagine if it has a tunable ECU. Man, maybe you could have gained more, right? Maybe Jasper of ECU later could lend a box and the owner could fund the 1R Dino session after the final base run. Let us see. That's just an idea, of course. It's just more expensive. Sorry. I mean, the owner might have start to have a habit of disliking me because of ideas that leads to more expenses. But of course, I hope and I'm sure, or at least I hope, find the right beat will find this interesting because we had a talk about Jody Cosetang and driving all the stock cars here. And hey, maybe I'm slash Takeda. Who knows, right? And of course, we would always use this comparison when we do the final base run and we'll compute the volumetric efficiency on what's changed if it went up or the same. We will show you guys for sure. Now on the next episode, we'll be disassembling this engine and we'll let you see what the hell is inside this engine because it's running really good. So you know you gotta like this video and of course subscribe if you haven't. You know you wanna, just so you can get to be updated.